Good evening Hackology, welcome to 2014 and part 3 of the Python game tutorial. So last year we left off some time ago, I've been really busy working on some other projects and had some other stuff I've had to deal with, um, but I should be back to making the videos pretty regularly. Okay, enough said. Tonight's video we're going to finish off the Python game tutorial by going over not the old scripts that I've shown you to give you an insight of what Pygame is. Basically, when I was doing this, I reprogrammed the Pygame version of Nibbles from the Pygame website um, with a few more features and made it slightly more fancy. So what I'll do is I'll talk you guys through the code on this. I've got some other projects that we're going to be moving on to over the next few weeks, including, uh, in fact, you know, I'm not even going to talk about them. I'm going to leave them as a surprise because we have coolness. Um, so let's get to the code, let's have a look, see what uh, is happening in this Pygame script. I'm going to show you a screenshot of the game running, and um, that's how the game runs, it looks very pretty. And um, basically, <coughs> okay, high quality. So let's look at the code. The first few lines import random, import Pygame, and import Pygame locals. So um, import random imports the random number generator, which we need for spawning certain things on the screen. Uh, import pygame, pretty um, self-explanatory, imports the pygame libraries and variables. <coughs> we're width and we're height. Uh, self-explanatory, the window um, height and resolution of your game. Not gonna go into too much detail, we covered this in the other video, so if you're uh, interested, go and look at that one. Um, G size represents the grid size of the snake's um, bounds on the screen. So basically, um, a G size of 10 would make the grid 10 squares by 10 squares. G width equals the, um, the, the size of the squares in relative terms, as in pixels. So G width equals the, inth, uh, the, the width of the window divided by the grid size, which gives us an amount in pixels to draw to the screen. Don't worry about it too much, we'll come to it later. So G height equals um, exactly the same, but we're dividing the height of the screen by the grid size. So we'll have 10 squares across the top and 10 squares down the side. So underneath here um, is a class called snake. Um, this is the class for the snake that uh, will move around the screen. Um, the init variables self.data will store the um, array of where the actual snake is on the screen. Self.alive stores if the snake is alive or dead. Self.direction equals kwrite. So basically that um, initializes the um, direction of the snake to traveling um, to the right. Um, when it first gets drawn to the screen. So, um, <clears throat> basically we make the snake's body three pixels long to start with, or three squares, or three cubes, whatever you want to call them, long to start with, and the self.add s, x, y, zero, it will be adding a block to the square, um, block to the snake to, to begin with. So, self.add um, basically adds a snake part to the snake um, in the direction of travel. And then we have a remove function that takes the last part of the snake off. So as the snake moves across the screen, it's not really taking all of the bits of data and moving them across. It's just adding one to the front and taking one off the back. And then if you move to the left or to the right, it just removes the last piece and it doesn't really care what um, direction the other parts of the snake are moving. So it's a really simple method for moving the snake around the screen. Um, def head defines where the uh, location of the head of the snake is, which is important for deciding which way to turn when the user presses a key. Okay, um, so self, um, the, the body definition, the body part of the class, uh, basically returns all of the parts of the snake um, from the snake class. So if you wanted to iterate and go through the, with the different parts of the snake, you could easily access them 
by calling snake dot body. Okay, and um, that doesn't include the head, it just returns the body parts. Um, remove, I've already covered that, it uses self.data.pop which removes the last element of the array from the snake body. And <laughs> eating eating self um, basically checks that none of the, uh, the the head has not intersected any of the body parts so it just goes through um, in a loop and checks that the head is not positioned anywhere in the body and if it is um, it tells the snake that it's dead so it sets the alive variable to zero and that completes the snake class so moving on to the apple class um, the same it has a data variable which stores the XY um, locations for apples and then you've got add apple which will add an apple at a certain location within the game area um, and that concludes the apple class the apple class is really easy so just whereabouts it is and um, <coughs> that's all it needs to know and then you've got C score, which is the class for adding the score. So you've got um, the initial score is zero, set to zero when you define a new, a new instance of the class. And then when you've got add, you, the, you can call the add function and pass a variable in and add a um, number to the, um, to the score. So plus 10, plus 15, plus whatever you want to give the user for eating an apple. Okay. So moving on, um, this is another class I've added, which is a particle um, generator. So basically, if a snake moves into um, uh, where the apple is and eats an apple, then it's going to spray some particles across the screen, like either an explosion or something like that. So C particle, um, let's just go quickly over this class. The size of the particles, the um, location of the part. Oh, this is the particle class. So these are the individual particles. Um, so the location of the particle, the speed of the particle, uh, the life of the particle, so how many frames the particle will be present for on the screen, the um, total life, so maybe life is a max limit, I can't remember because it's been a while since I programmed this, and we've got um, the same self.alive, which is whether the snake is alive or not, and you've got self.color, that is pretty self-explanatory what color the particle is. And self.gravity is the amount of gravity we wish to apply to that particle. So basically, um, if we apply gravity to it, then the particles will look as though they're being drawn towards the ground. So every time the particle um, moves a frame, we subtract a teeny little bit from its vertical speed. And basically, when it gets to a certain point, the particle will start falling. Okay, so seed, basically, um, this function seeds the particle on the screen um, depending on what kind of positional variables you pass in you can pass in the x y and the speed the size of the particle the colors of the particle or the color of the particle and the total life of the particle so when you seed a particle calls this function it sets all the variables within the particle class and we've got a, a move function which basically moves the particle at the determined x or y speed and also applies gravity to the particle to make it move downwards and that's particle.move so then we've got another class called C particles, which is um, basically a collection of particle classes so the particles class basically uh, can hold many particles and basically regenerate them, you can pass in variables to how many you'd like to create, what um, point on the screen, whether they're random colours, whether they're a, a specific colour, and etc. So we'll, let's just talk through this. So we've got the seed particle, um, again this will create an amount of particles passed into the function with a predetermined speed, life, amount, RGB, colour and size. And then we've got seed random. So seed random will um, seed a random amount of particles to a position on the screen. And we've got the move function as well. So what that does is it goes through every particle inside the particles class and calls the p.move function, which will push the particles around the screen. And we've got another function here called kill old, which basically ensures that um, 
when the particles are created, uh, that when they're finished with, they're destroyed from memory. So they don't take up any space and slow the game or the frame rate down. Okay, so we're almost at the game loop. Um, I'm just going to move on to C sounds. C sounds is pretty self explanatory. This is a class for loading sounds, and basically, I quickly put this together to play MP3s in those as a background music within the game. So, C sounds in it, and this will load the sound effects, the beep, the dead sound, and the bonus sound. Um, toggle enabled, that's pretty self explanatory. Pass a um, Sorry, call toggle enabled, and toggle enabled will either turn the sound on if it's off, or turn it off if the sound is on. Um, FX load, uh, so FX dead plays the dead sound, FX eat plays the eat sound, and FX bonus plays the bonus sound. That's pretty straightforward. So um, that isn't the bit to do with the MP3s, I think that's in the main game loop. Moving on. Terminate, so um, basically uh, the terminate function kills the sound mixer, tells Pygame to quit, and then exits from Python as well. So you, um, we call pygamemixer.quit, pygame.quit, and quit. And then def main, here we are in the main game loop now, so all the classes above have, um, I've, I've just talked you through all come into being here. So. First of all, we set a return variable which tells us whether we should run the main game loop or not. So if the main game loop returns zero, it probably means that the snake's dead. We need to reset stuff and respawn the snake. Apple equals C apple, so we just create a new instance of the apple um, class. Snake xy is define the var for the snake in it to hold the xy variables. So um, basically that Okay, so basically that is to um, initialize the snake where the snake starts, and we pass those variables into the class snake initialization uh, function just below the two lines of code defining the body. Okay, uh, we create a new instance of C score. Um, we also add a new apple to the game screen, and we say world well, one, so we're going to loop forever. And then we say for event in Pygame. So if the key um, if the keys are pressed, then the code is going to go through here and it's going to catch the up, down, left, right keys. It's also going to catch uh, the escape key or the quit key, control C. And it's also going to um, detect when it's a game over and put us onto the game over menu or restart the game. And it also um, listens for the S key. Um, to toggle on and off the sound. So the next line down <coughs> check that the snake is in the um, game area so if the snake has moved off the screen to the left, right, up or down then the snake's dead so set the snake.alive variable to zero. Check that the snake isn't eating itself so we check that the head isn't in the body section by calling snake.eatingself, the function that we talked about earlier. And then we check is the snake eating an apple? And if indeed the snake is eating an apple, we seed some particles where the apple um, was. Uh, we remove the apple and we add a new apple. So if the snake is alive, then add the score. And We've got some special code here that basically says if the apple is in a really awkward place, so if it's in the top left corner, top right corner, bottom left, bottom right corner, and um, to give them more points than what they would if the um, if the apple was just in the middle of the screen, and that also applies if the apple is on the edge or the top of the screen, I, I believe. So. Um, then we add a new apple, we seed some particles, um, we play the the snake as it eaten the apple. Um, and also here for some reason this cues a new track into the sound mixer. Oh so um when we eat an apple, um 
just to keep the music pretty random, um, the next track that gets queued into the um, mixer is selected at random by the software, and that's that line of code that says pygamemixer.music.q, sound music string random. And basically, the tracks have a two digit number after them. Uh, I think it's one to 16 tracks. And Pygame just basically chooses a number and sets that file name to the next one. So the next time you eat an apple, it will just choose a different tune, and eventually you'll get different music played through the game. Um, we play the eat sound effect. Uh, otherwise, if it's not eating an apple, then we remove a body part from the uh, from the snake. So the snake's moved. Um, the, the head has moved forward to the next square available, um, and it's alive. It's not eating itself and the last square from the snake is then removed so if it's not eaten an apple it doesn't need to grow by one so we remove that last square and we don't do that if it has eaten an apple and the snake gets one part bigger okay then we check for the direction so we, we're looking to see whether it's key up key down key left key right and we add one to the snake xy data uh, for the head depending on the position, um, de depending on which key is being pressed. So we either add one to the vertical, subtract one, or we add one to the horizontal, or subtract one. And that will move the snake up, down, left, right, or around the screen. Um, gsurf.fill000 fills the background of the, the um, fills the background of the canvas to black. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to draw everything out to the screen. So we're drawing out the particles, we're drawing out the snake, we're drawing out the font to display the game, uh, the game high score um, to the screen. Uh, we also put some particles there when we eat an apple, so um, it kind of flashes down by where the high score is that you've, you've scored something. Um, so we draw everything to the screen and then right down at the bottom here is basically a uh, the, the init the initial loop that calls the main game loop so we've just been over the main game loop there uh, that runs uh, until Pygame detects the quit um, call or the quit keyboard combination on the on the keyboard and this basically just keeps the game running so whenever um, the, the game quits or it gets to a certain point um, the main game loop continues to run and this just sits there and makes sure that that is still running and still the case um, this is where all the um, main definitions are made as well you've got the particles are defined here sound effects is defined here um, C particles is defined here um, you're also doing some of the stuff that we did out of the other script, which is initializing Pygame. Uh, we're initializing the game clock, the game surface, uh, also the sound effects class, and we're telling the um, sound to cue a random track right at the start so the game will play some music. And that just about concludes uh, tonight's tutorial on Pygame. I think maybe we might touch on Pi game in the future at some point but uh, we're going to move on to some real code and some probably more practical um, things over the next few episodes so peace you've been watching hackology as always have fun hacking and we should be back really soon <laughs>